This episode of the Red Bull Ramp is by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Ramp. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster, William Martin, Gwen Rochesco, Clayton John, Chris Adamek, and Maeve Dartinez. Now, on to the show. The Red Bull Rant is a free-flowing podcast with three soccer-loving idiots who don't know when to shut their dumb potty mouths. So listener discretion, yeah, it's, it's pretty much advised. Welcome, my friends, to the show never ends. This is the Red Bull Rant Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Ipeco. I'm Pat McDonald, and this is episode 371. Oh. <laughs> it was working literally right before we started recording. You heard it. I did. You know what? It's just perfect. This, this is just fucking perfect. Is it everything else? Uh, I'm going to edit the show at some point and put this in like right after here but okay we were trying to play an audio file off the soundboard and the soundboard was literally working right before we started recording i can attest this is true Ugh. existence is pain <laughs> uh, uh, seriously this is Did like you... fucking perfect for what we're gonna talk about what was that song what was that sound did you just throw the other computer on the ground <laughs> <laughs> That was my hands. Okay. <laughs> I'm not throwing my computers on the ground. I'm not crazy. <laughs> well, you never know. All right. So before we begin, uh, we do have a new patron. I'm pretty sure this is not going to work. Yeah, no. That sound doesn't work either. I'd tell you something with Skype is fucking it up now that we're recording. Uh, but we have a new patron, a, a producer-level patron. Uh... A name that those that are familiar with the beginning of the show are going to know. Mr. Maeve Dartinez. He's back, ladies and gentlemen, and he's supporting he's, us. He's back. I, I could have sworn he ended every phone call with saying he did not like the Red Bull rant. I guess he's coming around. I know. And now he's yeah. giving us five bucks a month. Thank you, Maeve. We appreciate it. Yeah, we can buy a candy bar. And maybe we can get some voicemails in the future. You never know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. All right, uh, so two games to talk about. Uh, just a continuation of the horrible streak for the Red Bulls. Uh, uh, losing a heartbreaker 3-2 at home to New England after taking the lead twice in that game. Uh, then following that up with a 0-0 draw against FC Cincinnati, the team that has the second most goals allowed in MLS this year. Oh, oh boy. Uh, so let's uh, get to the tweets. Let me scroll down here to the beginning. Okay. Uh, so this one's after, we're going to start after New England game. First, Travis Moose at Moose underscore Travis. Thank God we traded away Tim Parker, right? Right? <laughs> uh, Tonito M at Tonito M on Twitter. We need a game changer and we don't have one. That is all. Yep. Uh, Travis Moose actually had a follow-up. Piss poor effort defensively to close out the game. Highly questionable in-game strategy by Struber. Starting to look like he's an overpaid Armis, frustrating at the very best. I, I don't want to go saying he's a overpaid Armis. Mm-hmm. Because we've seen players actually improve. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'd say. I'd say <laughs> some players have gotten better. Just, you know. Yeah. Uh, Brian Roth at Brian Roth 95. Miss Reyes and Nealis. Wow. Uh, Is that how bad we are? <laughs> yeah. uh, Alex Parsi at Alex Parsi. Too young. Must focus on putting in a complete match. Yep. Definitely agree with that. Uh, Anthony Giafara at Giafara 316. Offensively, they're ex- exceeding expectations, but with no Adam Long, they need help on defense. We know Red Bulls is a feeder to Salzburg and Leipzig, and offense is sexy. If a player isn't staying within Red Bull Global, they won't make a move. Sincerely, your friend Anthony from the Encyclopedia 
first like Anthony D Encyclopedia from Sports Frenzy Pod sold out. Yes, I'm going for the cheap pop. It's a wrestling pod, everybody, and you know we we do talk wrestling on the show, so check it out. I thought it was more than that. Ah, uh, it's mostly wrestling. I think. Uh, he'll text me later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Steven Santos at Creepy Taxi. Defense. What defense? We have none this game against New England. Proves our back line is garbage. Okay. Can't really argue. Okay. Uh, this one, I believe, was from before. Yeah. So this one was in, like in between the two, um, the two games. Ed Ritter at Ed Ritter 60. Uh, the pain from the Revs game is still there. Am I going to be okay? Oof. Uh, I'm not sure, dude. Honestly, yeah. stop watching the team. All right. Uh, so now uh, for the FC Cincy match, uh, JM at Gnome, Gnome Sniper on Twitter. And this was not directly for the post game, but it just kind of works. When you order Gerhard Struber off of Wish, and it's a picture of of Strauf, um, Strom, uh, since he's coach. Yeah, seems right. Yep. Uh, Richesco, at Richesco on Twitter, trust Cincy to shake off their Vermeil disease for this one. How low can Barlow's bar go? Let's go low, Tol- baby. Tolkien, Duncan, now Fabio. Someone, has someone planted bottles of hair bleach in the Red Bull shower? <laughs> donut, colon, donut. Because donuts are forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Bradford X Barber, because I had sad Truman on there. He just said, Truman, what? I wish Truman was on here to explain this one. <laughs> uh, and then Anthony Gaffara, uh, Truman shouldn't be sad because he wasn't there in person like some of us. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. I share your pain. Be you there? Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah, that, was, that must have been rough. Oh, yeah. That was an awful game yesterday. All right, let's get into our likes and dislikes, and we'll start with dislikes, of course. So, Pat, what do you dislike about these matches? Oh, it is rant time, baby, and I've been waiting to be on the show all day today because I'm just fucking over this team. I, I really or just rather the way this team is being fucking run. And the Florian Velo trade today was just the cap on, you know, the cherry on top of this whole fucking thing. And I'll get to that, of course. And it's funny, I'm actually glad we did not record an episode before the Cincy show, uh, before the Cincy game, rather, because I was almost ready to give Fabio some praise because he actually scored a goal, finally, after God knows how fucking long. You know, yeah, he's a striker, he's supposed to put the ball in the back of the net, but he doesn't really do that. But ultimately, I just want to talk about the way this team is run. And you know what, maybe you could sell me that this year is a rebuilding year, but guess what? Arguably, our best player is already going to be gone at the end of the year, okay? So don't give me this rebuilding year. And now we have Florian Velo traded today. And to me, I'll, I get it. I don't think the market was very hot for Florian Velo right now. He's an injury case. Has not really played this year. But we got another 50 fucking thousand dollars in GAM. What are we going to do with that GAM? Nothing. We're going to do fucking nothing with it. So I'm beginning to think that this organization is just blatantly incompetent. Let's go back. Dax McCarty sold him for Gam and Tam or whatever. We did not spend it. Sasha Kleshin, Gam and Tam, we did not spend it. So either this team does not give a fuck or they're blatantly fucking stupid because we've gotten significantly worse and worse and worse and worse each time we sell a player for Gam and Tam. And then what do we bring in? We bring in fucking half measures like Fabio. And maybe I actually should be harder on Kamala. Because he's a designated player. I'm sorry, when you're a designated player, you better be fucking changing the game. Okay? And you don't. You're an afterthought. That's what you are. And then, no offense to you, it's the FO that seem to think, yeah, all of a sudden you're going to score all the goals. Both those players have six goals on the season. They're fucking forwards. What's your job? To score. Okay? Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm over the way this team is run. It is beyond time that every one of us who has season tickets just says, no thank you anymore, and just send a message to this team. The best thing that can happen to this team this year, no question, is that they finish near the bottom of the table. I mean, we're at the point right now, I hope Pro-Rel is coming. I know it's not, don't get me wrong, but I hope Pro-Rel is coming because this type of incompetence, this type of just 
not giving a fuck about your team, it, it, it's it. Something needs to be done about it. Whether the league needs to say, "Hey, Red Bull, enough is enough," because they really are undermining this team. There's there's no question about it that they're undermining this team. Okay, they give a shit about. I understand Red Red Bull Leipzig is the crown jewel, but at least they still get trophies in Salzburg. But here, no, we're a fucking farm team. And enough is enough already. It's pathetic. And last night's game was just an absolute dud against one of the worst teams in the league. Are you fucking kidding me? And then your big move today is let's trade Flor- Florian Velo for Gam we're never going to use. And don't get me wrong. We're, we're not going to make the playoffs this year. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's just not happening. All right. And you know what's going to happen? I bet. Even though, like, even though I think that will be the best thing to happen, they're going to come out with some statement. This is unacceptable. We're going to reload. And here's our players we brought in. A bunch of 16-year-old development academy players. Yeah, they're going to change the system. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm fucking over it. I'm fucking over it. And you know what a friend man asked me to mention? Matthias Jorgensen. Yeah, he's trash too. So yeah, my dislike is the whole fucking... Oh, you could, Matthias Jorgensen, by the way, we had to beg a team in Denmark to take away from us after we uh, paid how, how much for him? Seven figures? That which also reminds me. Frank and Maya, a seven-figure in-league transfer. And what's he doing? What's he doing for this fucking team? I mean, come on. I'm so fucking over it. I really am. You know, I, I, I admit I'm, bl- I'm blessed because I came into this uh, team in 2010. This is probably the first year they're going to miss the playoffs. I mean, they have not missed the playoffs is what I mean. You know, in the, the entire time I've been the team. But you know what? I, I don't watch this team to just make the playoffs. I actually do want to see MLS Cup. And I know there are fans who are way longer suffering than I am who want to see an MLS Cup. I'm just fucking the, the this dog shit that they send me. They make me go to at Red Bull Arena, and then they send me an email the next day asking, "What was your game experience? Did you like the amenities?" I don't give a fuck about the amenities. I want to see winning soccer. Okay, how do you not get that? That is why I pay you money to watch winning soccer. So my dislike: the organization is trash. Red Bull out. That's real clap, by the way. Thank you. That's more for the fact that you went on so long. Uh, man, I, I, I don't understand. Like, listen, I mean, obviously, you can, we've, Red Bull has proven you don't need to spend money to win in this league, right? That's what Jesse, the Jesse Marsh years were. We're reducing salary while also producing results. But and they talked about it on the on the MSG show. Development's good, but at some point you have to have results. And not scoring against the second worst team for goals against in the league is clearly a bad result. Uh, they said it was like twenty something like twenty nine goals. And if it, I think if it wasn't for, and I'm double checking, I think if it wasn't for the 7 0 loss against, yeah, the 7 0 loss against um, DC for Toronto is the only reason Toronto is the worst team in the league for goals against. Mm-hmm. They'd be tied at that. At, but either way, how do you not fucking score on that team? Mm-hmm. Uh,. Like, all right, Kamal, I'll give him at least a little credit for getting that shot off and coming close because the way he was positioned, I don't think he should have had a shot on goal. But that was the literal only chance we had really that night. Yeah, 100%. The, I mean, only, sh- the only shot we had that had any sort of chance of going in was from our striker with his back towards goal who had a bad first touch and had to basically – what is it like? Tech, I don't know if it's a volley or not, but volley out of the air, and he hit the corner, of the, the corner of the, the goalpost. Mm-hmm. That was literally the closest we got to goal last night, and yeah. that is fucking sad. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I will say, I mean, like you know, obviously, I could see these shots better on the end that's in the South Ward. My seats were up there in two hundred one. Uh, you know, I don't know how many times I saw Fabio dance around with the ball and take a shot when he shouldn't have made a pass, or you know. Make a pass when you should take a shot. It's just, uh, 
I mean, you know, it's going back to one tweet earlier about questioning Struber. I mean, I do like what he's done with Duncan. I do like what he's done with Clark. I like what he's done with Caceres. Uh Tolkien, obviously, a breath of fresh air. But, I mean, he's done nothing with these strikers. Nothing. And it's just like, and I, don't get me wrong, I do think, to a certain extent, you know, the FO has given Gruber a bag of peanuts to work with. So I don't put it all on Struber. I, I think if he actually had talent in here, maybe he would do something. And I will say this, you know, let's look back to when Thierry Henry came here. Dane Richards was an afterthought when Thierry Henry showed up for a year, I think it was a season, season and a half or so, while he was still here with Henry. His play got exponentially better. I know that's not necessarily a popular opinion among the fan base. But look it up. He started scoring goals again. A true veteran presence can actually make a difference within the squad beyond just the coach. And it's just like why they go for half measures with defensive uh, or their designated player slots and, and just, uh, you know, a bunch of answers. I mean, our designated players are Klamala and Drew Yearwood. Well, they're not game – your designated players – Honestly, you wait. Honestly, don't even sign a designated player at that point. Why? Why are you giving these guys designated player money? I, I, I don't Drew, Drew Year is not even a regular starter at this point. No, no, not at all. He's a rotational guy. I, I mean, if, you, if you're gonna, I mean, don't be wrong. I understand when they were actually trying. You know, they they got in some duds like the goalkeeper from Germany. I don't even remember his name. Frank Rost. I think that was it. Frank Rost. Oh, the one who got injured on the plane. Yeah, got injured on the plane. Uh, you know, uh, obviously the, the colossal one, Rafa Marquez. I get it. I mean, I get they got some of them wrong, and I'm also not saying you get the old veteran anymore. I think those days are past. But make an effort, for God fucking sakes. It's it's disheartening. It really is. Mm-hmm. And I technically I might miss just like it, but like. I'm just going to go both these games, and I'm going to say this team just doesn't have it. No, not at all. Not at all. Because they should have held that lead against New England. Mm -hmm. Right? New England is the best team in the league. I get it. But fucking Toronto beat New England. Mm -hmm. We were up on them twice at home. Mm -hmm. Right? If you were to tell me that that – that same exact scores happened at New England. Yeah, maybe I'll give Red Bull a little bit of credit. But mm -hmm. at home, Red Bulls have been the winningest team at home since Red Bull Arena opened in 2010. Mm -hmm. And you can't fucking give up late leagues like that. Yeah. I don't care who the fucking opponent is. If you are up at that point in the match, your job is to hold the lead and never give it up. Yep. And they gave it about two fucking silly goals, too. It wasn't even like there was great plays by New England that got that lead back. Those were poor, piss-poor defensive plays that did it. 100%. And guess what? The defense wasn't needed against Cincinnati because Cincinnati sucks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, great. You got a shutout. But fucking – the team only – Cincinnati's only scored 17 goals all year. Big fucking whoop they, that you held them to, uh, to zero goals. Yeah. It's embarrassing. Cincinnati, it, it's like, the, what, the, like third or fourth year in the league. They have never been good. Like they were literally the last in the league the two previous years. They're finally starting to improve, right? They're not dead last in the league. But they are not a good side. Mm -hmm. And you let them come in and basically, from okay, maybe except for 10 minutes in each half, you let them dictate that match. Mm -hmm. Right. This team for since Jesse Marsh's years, we've been told this team may not have a lot of possession, but they're going to press the ball and make it work for them. At halftime, Cincinnati had 53% of the ball. How many turnovers do we have in a good position to counterattack quickly? Mm -hmm. I, maybe one. Yeah. I, maybe I honestly I kind of blacked out of parts of that game because it was such a fucking bore to watch. Oh, well, you know what? J Jesse Marsh had Bradley Wright Phillips, Danny Warrior, Sasha Question, uh, Dax McCarty, and there was there was talent on the Felipe, team. Felipe, Felipe, Felipe Martins. 
Uh, Tyler, Tyler Adams for the one year. Tyler Adams, Aaron Long came out of nowhere. Uh, Sean Davis when he was. Mar Lawrence. Yeah. Well, Sean Davis wasn't the star on the team, you know. But and, no, but he was a solid piece. At the, at exactly. The he's a solid piece. And, but that's what he is. He's a solid piece. And now he's, uh, you know, if you're listening, Sean, I'm not shitting on you. You're not a bad player. But, you know, he, he's not a centerpiece player, you know. It's uh yeah, Kamar Lawrence. You're right. I mean, they they had they used to have that had legitimate talent, and now they don't. I mean, well, they do. Caden Clark's talented, although he's been rusty since he's come back since his appendectomy. Appendectomy, uh, but he's going to Leipzig. You know, he, he's gone at the end of the season. So what they, do we? They what basically do we have to ship, they shipped him out after half a year because yeah. he hit 18. Yeah. I mean, what do we? What do we have to look forward to? Nothing, because we know this, or we know the front office is going to do absolutely nothing. And and, to be like, fair, to be fair, I don't want to. I don't even want to say necessarily the people in Harrison are going to do absolutely nothing. But we know the headquarters in Austria do not give a flying fuck about this team. They only care in so far as getting pl- t- young, talented players. Yep, that's it. We can get two or three. Every couple of years, it's all that all that matters. And and let's put it this way: Caden Clark is not the only one. I think will be gone. I wouldn't be shocked if Casares is out the door next. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if uh, Duncan does not get resigned and leave. I mean, that would be embarrassing if they let him leave on a free transfer, which I mean, his contract's up, so it might happen. Uh, it's just I don't know. And uh, apparently, there were rumors about some Uruguayan center back coming in who was again eighteen. A child, uh, but I mean, I think what transfer deadline is in in it's today. Yes, and, 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 and it's it come to two hours at our recording time, if my understanding is. Well, he's already he's already signed on loan. He already he already left the Uruguayan guy. Yeah, Red Bulls announced it earlier today. They did get him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, whatever. He's still center back. We still need goals. But yeah, I mean. And the MSG broadcast, they're always talking about, oh, they're going to bring up somebody in. But the position we need is never the one talked about. Yeah. We, we, you know, we do need center back help, but yes, we, we need, we need strikers more. Yeah. We, we can't score a single goal on Cincinnati. I mean, give me a fucking break. I mean, we turned Tom Edwards into an MLS quality center back. So we're not really hurting that much for defensive at the moment, but. Yeah. It's really just depth because we got to be able to get any more injuries. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's, ah. mm. I mean, the, the thing that gets me about all this is, right, okay. Honestly, I am okay with the fact that Leipzig sees this as a way to farm talent for their for Leipzig and Salzburg. Okay, I'm honestly I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that part's not a problem for me. The problem is that generally, when you have these kind of like I'm gonna for, I'm using the term reserve team because at this point that's what I feel like we are to Leipzig. Yeah. When you have a reserve team. You still want them to be good and produce results yeah. and win trophies. Because aside from the benefit of you getting talent, you can sell talent on at a higher price. Yeah. yeah. So even from a business standpoint, it only makes sense to invest because you will get more out of the investment. Mm-hmm. It just baffles me that we can't even just say, all right, we're going to, all right, let's, for argument's sake, let's say I'm I'm in charge of Red Bull. I'm going to say, all right, I, I, I'm not going to give New York that much money, but I'm going to give them $5 million to go and buy some designated player, mm-hmm. right? Or $5 million total. You have $5 million to work with to buy a designated player. MLS roster rules, that's all you need because mm-hmm. the league pays for everything else. Mm-hmm. Every every other player on that roster is paid for by the league. It's not even like you have to put out, you know, I, I don't know what the, the cap total is. Like, let's say $30 million. I don't have to put out $30 million every year. I only got to put out five. For a professional soccer team at the top, in the top league of a country, mm-hmm. that's fucking nothing. 
Mm-hmm. Like five million dollars is not even is not even like bottom barrel transfer fees at this point. It's chump change for Red Bull. It Global. is. That's chump change for for any team at the top of their country. Yeah. Okay, the visit like the top like four or five countries in Europe. Yeah. Like that number is like chump change for like the top teams. It, 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 and it's not like you have to say use all five million on one person. They can easily go out and buy two or three players with that five million dollars, and and hell, they can still buy younger proven talent and still do the same thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a thirty-year-old veteran. It can mm-hmm. easily be a twenty-five-year-old who's established oh, yeah. and just not be, just hasn't been seen by the right people. Mm-hmm. You bring them in, get a year or two out of them, sell them off for a profit. It's basically Chelsea's business strategy minus the fact that you loan people out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I just don't see how, uh, to your point, I mean, I just don't see, like, okay, fine, we got this young and up and down talent in this one particular position. Great. So this other t- position where we have a gigantic fucking hole, why not fill it with a proven veteran? Like, we clearly don't have any strikers coming down the pipe. I mean, I mean we had, I mean, Brian White was okay, you know, I mean, that was probably the best in terms of a young striker coming through our, uh, you know, development academy. Although he, we had to redraft him, all that bullshit. But it, it's just, you know, it, it's if you, you don't have these positions, get it. Also, I hate the poor poor, too. I'm just going to throw that out there, too. I, honestly, I don't care about formation as long as it wins. <laughs> that, that I, don't, I, just, I, I don't know. I like, I like the two wingers. I, I, give me a winger who can cut inside. I like that way more. I don't know. Because right now, I feel like with the four four two, everybody knows you're just coming right up the middle. We have, like, no wing play. Uh, you know, except for when Duncan gets up there every once in a while. And even not, then, it's iffy. Uh, that's not me shitting on Duncan. I, honestly, some of the best passes last night were from him. And it, it wasn't his fault that the people who received them fucked him up. I, I, I I'm still just stuck on this not want to invest anything. No, it's embarrassing. And like, all right, let, let's, let's even say like if Red Bull Global doesn't want to spend the money because they don't think they're going to get anything out of the guy right after, outside of his time at the team. Mm-hmm. Doesn't getting a, a talent that helps you get results shine a light on everybody else at least. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, you might even make you be able to, okay. Caden Clark now looks just even a little bit better because he's got, all right, this is for argument's sake because we're not getting this guy, people, so just get it out of your heads. Uh, In no world are we getting this guy. But if Leo Messi is on your team and he makes Caden Clark just look that much better, you know, he makes him, that you sell him then for that much more, you know? It's just, uh, yeah, it it really does make sense, but I don't know. I guess the, over in Salzburg, they look at the empty Red Bull Arena and they're like, yeah, that's fine. Because if you remember in the Marsh years, uh, you know, we were getting 20 grand in there. We were getting 20,000 people in that stadium. And it was, and every single game that was, that place was rocking. Yeah. I mean, except for weekday games. Weekdays were Well, okay, cool. that's different. Weekday games were always a problem. Weekdays, but... weekday games were always weak. But, you know, uh, we were, we were getting a crowd. We were getting crowds. They were loud. They were excited. And then two years ago, we we're like, oh, we got to tarp off sections. Are you fucking serious? <sighs> and I think I'm already in for season tickets next year. What the fuck is wrong with me? Damn right. Sounds like it's kind of back. It sort of came back. It took me a second to figure out which soundbite that was. Yeah, I, I, I really... downloaded I downloaded the latest version. I'm hoping that would fix it. <laughs> All right. Is there anything to even like about these games? Uh, yeah. The New England match I at least watched on a rooftop down the shore. So, you know, that helped. <laughs> I wasn't watching the, the Revs game live, at least. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't watch it live. My Saturday night didn't get destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't watch it live. I watched it on a rooftop. Knocked back beers, had the ocean breeze coming in. It was, uh, that, that, that's my like. <laughs> I, I was out, um, playing mini golf in an arcade 
on Saturday <laughs> night, so I'll take that over this. Yeah. I I won a uh, plush Yoshi out of one of those claw grab machines. Nice. I well think it done. took me like like five to ten times, but still worth it. I almost won a Luigi two weeks ago, but I didn't. <laughs> I don't think there's any afterthoughts. I think we literally in our dislikes covered everything. <laughs> yeah, we kind of did. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, so prediction standings. Uh, no change in first, second, third, but everybody got a point because we all predicted pain against New England. Um, all of us stupidly picked the win against Cincy. Well, more odds. Yeah. All right, so Red Bulls' next match is Sunday, August 8th against Chicago, 6 p.m. on MSG ESPN+. Truman is saying a 2 nothing loss because, at this point, why the fuck not? And you know what? I'm going to follow him. I'm going to say 2 nothing because, at this point, I can't trust this team to fucking win anymore. Or maybe even draw against decent teams. I don't know. Uh, you still going on? I'm good. I, yeah. There's nothing really to keep talking about. Yeah. I say one nothing simply because Chicago's garbage, um, but we're garbage enough to still lose one nothing to Chicago. That's why I'm saying two. Yeah. Let's see. Who do we? There was a game that we lost recently. I was like, what the fuck? DC. That's right. We lost to DC one nothing. We shouldn't have lost that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was plenty of. All right. Uh, next, uh, New York. Oh, sorry, yeah, New York Ripples two lost their last match three one in Sacramento Republic. And this is what I was going to say. If we're all about developing youth, this is a sucky year for it because even Rebel two is not doing well. Yeah, no, I'm and, a- and I'm not expecting Rebel two to do well, but because if again they're a development team, right? Yeah. They're going to go through up and downs, but if the whole point is to grow from them up to us, this does not look good for the short-term future. Yeah. The next, like, three to five years looks bad. Well, that, that's the best part, is apparently, like, the, the cupboard is kind of bare. I, I've, I've, had, I've heard that, that our development system isn't even what it used to be. I mean, let's not forget, we actually signed Caden Clark and had to, like, get the rights from Minnesota. He was not a Red Bull Academy product. Yeah. I wonder how much NYFC is siphoning off now. I don't know. I don't even know if they have an academy, but I can imagine if they did that they would siphon off some, like the the ones on like Long Island, New York, closer to New York City, yeah, or which, closer to Manhattan. I will say this. They do need to get rid of the territorial rights. That's garbage. Yeah. All right, uh, New York Rebels 2 next match is Friday, August 6th against the Tampa Bay Rowdy, 7 p.m. Uh, they're currently still number 7th in the conference, 3-4-8, 13 points. Gotham FC uh, drew their last match 1-1 against the Houston Dash. Next match on Saturday, August 7th against, or, yeah, against North Carolina Courage, 7 p.m. They are still number two in the NWSL with a five five and one record, twenty points. And That's good they, for two. That's funny. <laughs> well, they're only five points off the lead, so Yeah. Well I still like a, a five hundred record is good for two is kinda of funny. You know, I didn't think about that. Uh yeah. you know what it is? Number three is six two and it's five wins, five draws. I'm sorry. Oh, five, five. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, I take yeah. it back, Gotham FC fans. I apologize. Yeah, I mean, one loss on the year is good for a second. That's yeah. yeah. No, that that makes more sense. Yes. Portland Thorns are eight wins, one draw, and three losses. So, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, time for the dumping ground. Ah, oh, god damn it. I gotta figure out what the hell's going on. I feel like I heard I'm and then it stopped. <laughs> it came in like funky. Uh, maybe it's the, the audio shit I'm doing. I don't know. I'll, you know what it is? I haven't restarted my computer in like a week or two. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, we started before every show from now on. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, just a quick note. I, Patrick talked about it. 
Florian Velo traded to FC Cincinnati, 50,000 in allocation this year. And if so- certain performance criteria are met, an additional 50K next year. That's just so everybody knows it. All right. Uh, second, Red Bull signed Uruguayan uh, center back Lucas Monzon from. Um, tell me if I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say this wrong, but. Oh, who the hell knows? Danubo FC? I would say Danubio. Okay. I'll take that one. Uh, on loan through the end of 2022. Oh, loan. Cool. Yeah. With an option to buy, because that's the fucking league standard. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, we're going to move this one to the end. Uh, next, international. U.S. men winning the Gold Cup over Mexico at in, in Las Vegas in front of that very, very Mexico partisan crowd. Might as well have been in Estadio Azteca. Yeah. 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 That I I that I think it has to be one of the best games I've ever seen from the U.S. men's team. I, I still take Nations League. I mean, if we're just talking this year, I take Nations League over this one. I, I think the Nations League game is a little better. But in terms of upset, because we were really playing like a C team, uh, this one was pretty sweet. I, I did not have hope. I was just kind of went into that game, just don't get embarrassed. And I, like once you got into like extra time, I'm like, all right, good. Good. I'm good. Like, whatever happens here, I'm good. And then we scored. <laughs> and then we scored. And then Miles Rabbit, Robinson, your Aaron Long replacement here on at this point. Uh, I mean, I just don't know how he has not earned uh, your center, your start, center back starting uh, position next to uh, John Brooks. He was just phenomenal in this tournament. Uh, Matt Turner, I mean, if Ethan Horvath and, Greg, and Zach Steffen are not getting regular miss, minutes... I I don't know how you don't make Matt Turner your number one keeper in September because we know we know Stefan definitely is not getting those minutes at Manchester City, but we'll see what Horvath does with Nottingham Forest. Um, I mean those are my two big guys. I mean I liked obviously Matthew Hoppy. Oh my God, like he is. I uh, if if I was anything but American, I would fucking hate Matthew Hoppy. But since he's our guy, I love him. I love how he just, like, pesters the opponents and then just walks away with this shit-eating grin. <laughs> it's so great. I love this kid. I mean, I really hope he's not a flash in the pan. I hope he's going to be here for a while. Uh, I love Matthew Hoppy. Um, you know, a, a lot of guys showed. I mean, Sam, I mean, a lot of them just got transferred, too. I mean, Sam Vines is off to Belgium. I don't know if it went through, but I know Gianluca Buzio was apparently off to Syria. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Shaq Moore came out of nowhere. Uh, James Sands, I, I think New York City's holding on to him, but he had a good uh, tournament. And now that he's back with Blue Team, we'll stop talking good about him. Uh, Not that and, he came out of nowhere, but Jossi Zardes reestablished himself on the national yeah, team. Yeah, absolutely. I was just about to say, J- Jossi Zardes, I mean, at this point, I think he, I and I've crapped on this guy over the years, especially in those, you know, Klinsman years when he would, like, touch the ball and kick it 30 yards, you know, just to, like, to settle the ball. Somehow that was his touch. Uh, I don't, uh, I mean, I want to see what Josh Sargent will do, but I, I kind of think you might have to say Giassi Zardes is your first choice striker. It's definitely between him and Sargent at this point, I would say that much. Daryl DK, I, I, I'm not giving up on the kid, but he's down the pecking order at this point. Um, I think DK might have gotten thrown in a little too early, honestly. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. This, 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 all these guys, I mean, most of these guys on this team got thrown in too early for this particular Gold Cup. I mean, they, they went with a youth team. That was their plan. It, you know, that's what they did, and that's fine. And, I, I mean, I think I like a lot. I think what a lot of guys I've listened to, I think they brought up a good point. The DK has literally been playing soccer nonstop for about a year. I think there's like 51 games in yeah. So, and then he also got hurt. So, and, and it was his first professional year. Yeah. Like he just yes. kind of started playing. Yeah. So, you know, if they're, I, I don't really go on. I don't. I don't really. You know. You know. Obviously, I'm not on Twitter anymore. So I don't really search anything. Um. So I don't know if people are shitting on him, but I wouldn't shit on him yet. He's still very young. I think he may have just turned 21. He might even still be 20. I'm not entirely sure. Uh. So, you know, everyone, calm down. He could be fine in time, <laughs> you know. 
But it's uh, he, but he apparently is also potentially going to get transferred back over to Europe. So we'll see. But, yeah. I, I think what this tournament proved was we have possibly the deepest pool of players ever. Uh, oh yeah, without question. And having to play three qualifying games a week in each of these windows coming up, that is a huge thing to have in your back pocket. Oh yeah. I mean, Mexico basically played their same team in the Nations League in the Gold Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they had they had their youth guys over in the Olympics, but still. I think it was seven or eight starters for the same players as the Nations League final. Yeah. Well, I think Chucky was missing because he got hurt in the Gold oh, Cup. Yeah, yeah. Very first game in the Gold Cup, but Which, still. To be, to be fair, may have helped us, but hey, it happens. Yeah. But, I mean, we're still talking over half their starters from the Nations League final were in this final. Hmm. So, clearly, that's their group of guys at the moment. Mm-hmm. Well, that may, may change it. Tot, uh, has Tata Martinez been fired yet? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he still has his job. That's kind of surprising, honestly. I, I'm a little surprised, but I actually... Uh, I agree that he should stick around. I mean, come on, he's he's a really good coach. I mean, I think I there's, certain, there's certain things I think he needs to change. I know, I shouldn't give uh, Mexico any you know, inside info, but, uh, you know... It's like it's. I do think that you know. I think I've heard people say like he needs to like just swallow his pride and say, "Hey, uh, Chicharito, Carlos Vela, why don't you come on back?" You know, and Mexico might start scoring some goals again. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, the U.S. women uh, unfortunately did not make it to the gold medal match uh, at the Olympics. They had lost in the uh, semifinals. It was one nothing, I think, on, on the penalty kick. Yeah, to Canada. Canada. But uh, today they won the bronze, I believe, four three over Australia. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, they did. I, I didn't have a chance to watch it, of, of course, because of time zone differences. I found out on my phone before I having a chance to watch it. So, <laughs> uh, but sorry, I was gonna say it. it kind of sucks, but it seems to be the trend for the women. If they win one, they don't win the other, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, all I can really say is that the fire they showed today, what the hell was that the whole the entire tournament? Uh, I mean, they I don't know how many games where they played, and it just seemed like everyone was standing around, no off-the-ball movement. Um, and while I would say that they kind of much like they did in 2016 after they failed there in Rio, I would say I think they really need to start inviting more and more players into these friendlies, see what you got, and really turn over a lot of this roster, get younger, all that good stuff. I will say it was two veterans today who just came out with, like, fire in their souls. That was Megan Rapino, Carly Lloyd, uh, Megan Rapino with the Olympico, I think she still has a United States career left a little bit. I, I will say that, even if it's just a super sub. Carly Lloyd, I'm not so sure. So I will say for Carly, I was super happy to see her get two goals at the end of this tournament. I really was. Um, it, it just it, might she still appear here and there? Yes, but I, I think it's very unrealistic to assume she will be on the World Cup roster uh, in three years. Uh, actually, wait, hold on. Two years at this point. Now I'm thinking about it. Oof, geez, forgot about it. We skipped a year because of COVID. <laughs> um, uh, whereas Rapino, I think, might hang around. So I'm just going to say, Carly Lloyd, thank you for everything. I, I mean, you know, if I'm premature, I really apologize. <laughs> but, you know, and to see you go out with two goals in a bronze medal game was tremendous. And, and her and Rapino, really. I mean, they just uh, they played piss today, and it, it paid off. There's no question about that. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have anything to add because, like I said, I didn't get a chance to watch it. So, yeah, I wasn't going to watch it, and then I saw the score, and I was like, "Ah, oh, sounds like it was an exciting game." <laughs> was it back and forth or uh, it a little bit in the beginning? Yeah, the, the the Australia's third goal was very late in the game. The okay. U.S. was up four two, I guess. I think. Four, oh man, no, I think it was four one actually. Ooh. Yeah. Four. Yeah. So yeah, it was four one. Uh, Australia immediately answered with the second. 
And then and it was like the 90th minute when they scored the uh, third. Okay. Yeah. How many goals were called back for offside? <laughs> uh, one, I think. I think it was only one this time. I think that I think that puts them in double digits then for the tournament. I mean, yeah, it's insane. I mean, I, I what I do recall what they the in the Australia game in the group stage, like they had one that clearly should have been a goal, but I don't know. They had like six of them against New Zealand. Oh, the New Zealand one, which could have been twelve one. It could have been a repeat of Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh. Last thing for Dublin Graham, kind of talked about already. Uh, Lionel Messi is no longer with Barcelona. Um, apparently, they had agreed to a contract, but La Liga's like, no, you can't fucking spend any more money. So, <laughs> Messi is technically free agent. I don't know if he's going to have to be a transfer, or a free transfer or paid. That's the only thing that I couldn't really figure out. I think he's out of contract, right? I That's what it seemed like, but I wasn't sure. I think he's out of contracts. I, think, I mean, that's oof. Who's a Messi and a free transfer? <laughs> I mean, you almost like beg Messi at this point. Can you just sign for a million dollars? We promise we'll sell you. Well, no, the, the, that was the thing. Messi agreed to a pay cut, and yeah. Liga still said no. Yeah, no. Apparently, like Barcelona's in dire financial straits. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. who can imagine just spending a shit ton of money on players for years on them with dire consequences? Yeah, it almost makes you wonder. Like, Serginho Best desk, like he's he's like he's on Barcelona. Like, yeah, but are they even still Barcelona? <laughs> <laughs> so so I, we we kind of talked about the the craziest places for him to end up. End up. Clearly, Red Bulls will be one of them, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, you want to fill the stadium, Red Bull Global, and not that you listen to this, you're like, ah, oh, they speak the strange English we don't understand. Yeah, fuck you. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to fill out the stadium, sign Messi. I mean, Rebel Global, Global couldn't afford it, but, if, you know, don't get me Everybody, slow your rolls. Don't seize on what we're just saying. We know it's never happening. <laughs> yeah, no. They're not going to spend that money. Yeah. They're not even going to spend that money for, like, Leipzig, so we're not. Yeah, yeah. And, li- and logically, if Rebel Global's going to do it, they put them in Leipzig because they're in the Champions League, so yeah. why not stack your Yeah, why not win the Bundesliga? Yeah. So, so what, what what do you think the craziest destination for him would be? Ah, uh, craziest destination for him, Lionel Messi. Uh well, there's Uzbekistan. You know, <laughs> uh, you bring some eyes to Uzbekistan. I think that'd be uh, nice. I mean, that's me. I'm nuts. I, if I was Messi, I would go to some place totally random and see if I could somehow take him to the final sixteen in the Champions League. I'd be like, all right, um, I don't know, who's the best team in Romania? Let me go there. Let me see if I could be that good to just really turn this team around. I mean, that that's me. That's what I would do. I'd go nuts. Uh, what is it? Uh, Tel Aviv in Israel? Yeah, Tel Aviv. Let's go to <laughs> Maccabee Tel Aviv. Let's do it. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, the, the, I, that, that's, that's what I would do. I mean, I do think MLS is slightly realistic. But if he's gonna, he's gonna, if he goes anywhere, it's gonna be Miami. It's gonna be LA, one of the I, LA teams. I don't know if the league will let him go to Miami, only because their fucking shit with the DPS were so stupid that they actually. Yeah, that's them. true. That's true. But I, if I recall, and, and I don't remember where I read this or where I heard this, and it might have been all bullshit. But I, if I recall, the contract he agreed to did have a stipulation where he went to Miami. And I don't know how that works out because I, I don't believe they're the same organization, Barcelona and Miami. But I believe there was a stipulation there. And again, I could be wrong. I just vaguely recall reading that or seeing that somewhere. So that's maybe, really David why Beckham, like, maybe David Beckham got in his ear like, hey. Yeah. But hey, <laughs> bring your giant ass dog to Miami. Let's do it. So, like, that, so that you would got be a plus. You could crash that. Yeah. I, I mean,. I feel like there's really, yeah, there's only a couple of locations he's going. Like, I mean, as good as New England is, he's not going there. He's not going no. to Philly. You go, I, I think realistically, if he's coming to MLS, it's going to be LAFC, Miami, or New York City FC. Yeah. Because yeah. New York City FC has the Manchester City pockets, and they're yeah. willing to spend Manchester yeah. City is anyway. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the Yankees are saving so much money on the Yankees. Maybe they can throw in a few dollars, too. So. Yeah. Although I don't know if Messi would want to play on a converted baseball field. There's that. I mean, uh, realistically, I almost feel like England, you know, try. I mean, I feel like de- obviously not Spain. That's for sure. 
They may, uh, uh, does he want to follow Ronaldo again to Italy? Although was Ronaldo still at Juventus, I know there were some issues there. That he as might far as I know, he's still there. Okay. I mean, is he going to reignite that rivalry? I don't see Germany. So, I don't no. know. I think you, I mean, maybe England. Maybe he, maybe Pep. Maybe Pep gives him a call. They come on down to Man City. I mean, that was, him going to Man City has been a rumor for a while, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd say, I say. All of a sudden, Harry Kane's no longer part of Manchester City's plans, and he's stuck at Tottenham. Yeah, I, uh, (laughs) realistically, I say England. That's what I say. Realistically, I think that'd be Manchester City uh, or United City overall. Yeah. Um, not that uh, it would actually happen, but Everton, I would love to see him at Everton just oh, because. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, does he have a Tom Brady complex? Did he hate Pep? Uh, Pep? <laughs> so, so then he's going United. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else for dumping ground? I got nothing. Okay. So now it's time for Pat's betting corner. We got like half the casino. Yeah, we got half the half. Yeah, yeah, we got COVID casino. It's half open. <laughs> it's the masked up version. That's why you can't yeah, hear it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're putting masks back on. I mean, it might as well be, right? I am. All right. Work, so. <laughs> All right. So this week, uh, even though I keep getting burned by Columbus, I'm still going to ride them again. They're at home against Atlanta. I'm taking them. Uh, Austin FC. I mean, look, they're an expansion team, but they all every once in a while do well. I'm going to trust them this week against a terrible little. FC Dallas team, which is just selling everybody. Um, and then I'm going to take the Galaxy at home over in Vancouver. Uh, so that is my three pick, three team parlay of the week. I can see all of that. Yeah. I'm trying. To, I, I'm still wondering when sports betting is going to start in Maryland. I know it's they, they said they're going to try to do it by football season. Yeah, I'm kind of amazed it hasn't taken off. I mean, it's just. I mean, like, you know, I don't see guys scratching their arms in New Jersey, you know, saying like, I lost all my money on the Jets. I mean, so like like these fears of sports gambling, I don't I don't get why any states still have any hang ups. Let's see. Uh, I guess there's still regulatory hurdles that they're working towards in Maryland. All right. Well, if you get it, if you get it before college football season, I'll send you a dollar. Or you can put it on the Rutgers for me because I can't bet on Rutgers in New Jersey. Yeah, it was kind of stupid. Yeah, uh, actually, two dollars. One for Rutgers to win national championship. Uh, another dollar for Rutgers to win the Big Ten championship. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm making out like a bandit if they win either of those. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you. As soon as I find out, I'll let you know and I'll I'll place that bet for you. Yeah. Awesome. And if they have the same rules like that and you want to bet on anything in Maryland, you let me know. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to bet on the University of Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe soccer. I think they've been a pretty good soccer program. Yeah, right? there you go. Or lacrosse, because apparently lacrosse is the national sport of Maryland. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Even though I think it came from upstate New York. Fuck you, Maryland. <laughs> I didn't say it was a vent here. I just said it's the, the, the sport here. Yeah. Last I checked, the Iroquois from New York. <laughs> Screw you, Maryland. Your fucking state sport. Get out of here. <laughs> I mean, come on. This this state's beer is Natty Bo, so. Hey. Hey. It's fine, cheap-ass beer. <laughs> it's now part of the Paps Blue Ribbon family, so. Damn right. All right. Uh, anything else, or are we just going to wrap this? Uh, Truman's terrible. The team of the week. Truman chooses uh, us. There you go. Sure, I'm pretty sure he would have done it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. You heard some part of that, hopefully. Yeah, I think All I right. heard it. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's wrap this one up. Uh, you can visit us at patreoncom slash rant One buck a month is all you need. Get exclusive content such as monthly wrap-ups, live post games, anything you decide to do, or like our new pay, our new producer, May Tartinez, he gets a producer credit. It means he gets read at the beginning of the show. You get that, too. Email us, redbullrant at gmail.com. If you want to call us, 973-348-5329. Facebook.com slash redbullrant. On Twitter, at redbullrant for the show. At Dr. Stooge for myself, at the Truman for Truman. Subscribe to your iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast. 
Last words before we get out of here. I don't know. Uh, why can't you be a Saturday game so I can drink and not worry about having to go to work the next day? I mean, at least 6 o'clock, so you get a little bit of extra time. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. And again, 6 o'clock is a weird time for games. Yeah. All right. So for Pat and myself, this has been episode 371 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, go Red Bulls.